Hi, I'm Mark from Sounds in Sync. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how AddyLoad can be used to customize an ad list so that it can be used to conform your location web files. More specifically, I'm going to customize an ad list that was created from a picture edit where only the camera audio was used and there is no metadata that links those edits to the multi-track poly web files. But before I dive in, if you haven't seen it already, check out the full demonstration of why and how you can form your location web files with Eddyload and the Pro Tools field recorder workflow by clicking this link. So back to our problem. What we've got here is an AEF and the first four tracks are location audio and then we've got four tracks here of temp music. What we want to be able to do is conform these poly web files to match the edits made in these clips. Now, as these uh, web files here came from the camera, there is no metadata contained within them that will allow them to match directly to these web files. So we can't use the Pro Tools field recorder workflow for that. But what I do have is a audio EDL, and I'll just load that into Eddy Load to make it a bit easier to see what we've got. Um, this is already cleaned up a bit, so the A1 edits and the list are just the the first side of the A1, A2 edits, and the A2 edits here is the left side of the A3, A4. So in order to conform these location web files to match these edits, what we need to do is find something in this edit list that allows it to link it to these web files. Now these web files have got a sand roll metadata, but unfortunately that isn't anywhere on our edit list. We've got no roll name set, the only thing we've got is a clip name. Now fortunately these web files have been recorded with the sound device as a recorder and they are actually named with the slate and take number. So we can actually have a look down, see our first event here, 132B-1, we've got a 132B take one here. So what we're actually going to demonstrate in this video is how we convert this clip name to look exactly like this file name, and thereby we can actually link uh, each event to a web file. So we're going to assume that all the other file names are named with the same criteria. And the other thing to check is that the timecodes match. Now, if all your source timecodes and the edit list start at midnight, then you can pretty much rest assured that nothing's going to link up. But as the source timecode here of 1353.13 is after the timestamp 1352.35 and the duration of this web file is 2 minutes and 12 seconds, you can see there that you're going to be able to extract this section of audio from this web file. So all is looking good on that front. So before I manipulate this clip name to match this file name, there's one extra thing I can show you in this demonstration, and that is if you didn't have access to an audio ADL, you can actually extract that timecode and clip name information from the AEF. Now, to do that with Eddyload, we'll just drag and drop this session file onto Eddyload, and we're just going to import all eight tracks so I can show you how to clean up the list. And we're going to import the Pro Tools clip name into the role name field and the clip name field. So the first thing we'll do is just delete the last four tracks. So now we've got tracks one to four, which is the same tracks one to four that you see here in the session. And we're just going to clean that list, which just removes all the dual track events. So now we've just got one track for each of these. And here you can see the same clip name and we've got the same source time codes. So we can actually manipulate the edit data that was stored within this AEF to be able to expand to your location webs. So now we're just going to open up the column transfer window so that we can manipulate the data stored within this clip name. And with the column transfer window, you can copy data from any particular column, being the role name column to the clip name column, and vice versa. Or if we had an EDL loaded, we could load data from different comments into the clip name or role name column. While we transfer that information, we can build a new uh, slate and tape type number where we manipulate all of the elements exactly how we need. 
And we can also find replace certain characters, truncate the text, remove text um, at a certain position, or add text at the end or beginning. And while we're doing that work, if you actually select the event that you're working on, you can see it appear in this preview window. So what we're going to do is modify this first uh, event uh, so that it looks like this file name down here. To do that, we'll enable the build new name from source elements. We're going to look for um, a clip name that has two elements uh, delimited by a hyphen. So the first element will be all the characters before the hyphen. The second element is all the characters after the hyphen. And we're, we could build a new number with either one of these elements, but we're going to use both. And the first element, we're not actually going to change anything. So we're just going to have the 138B, which is what one, sorry, 132B, which is what we want. And then we're going to add a delimiter, a dash T. So it looks like that. And the second element, we're going to remove all uh, trailing non numeric characters so that it gets rid of the dot new dot and everything after that. And then we're also going to add some leading zeros so that we get the dash T01 to look like the web file there. So if we scoot up and down the events here, oops, can't see it like that. We can actually see exactly what it's doing for all of these events in the clip name. Now, the last thing we need to do is add a dot wav to the end. I'll just move that here. And now we can see exactly what this clip name is going to turn into. So now we'll just go transfer all events, close the column transfer window, and now our slate and take number now looks exactly like the web file name. To check that all of these file names will actually link to your location web files, we can just select list and check file names for conform. Then we can drop on the folder of all the location web files. And here it shows you all the file names here on the left are shown green, showing that it's found an identical match to the location web files that you've dropped on. So now this list is actually ready to conform your location web files. So what I'll do is I'll just save this list and that will just save next to the session file in case we need to come back to that. And we can also export the conform reference tracks. And we'll just create a 48K 24-bit session. Now I'm going to zoom through conforming these location web files. But if you want a more detailed explanation of what I'm doing, by all means, have a look at the full length video, which we link to at the beginning of this one. As we can't uh, import a Pro Tools session generated by Eddie Lowe directly, we'll just save this in Pro Tools first, and then we'll go back to our AEF session. Now what I'm going to do here is hide and make inactive those music tracks as we don't need them. Then I'm going to import the conform reference tracks that it load just generated. And now we're going to expand these. So we'll make these field recorder guide tracks and we'll set up the match criteria. Now we actually only have to set up the file name match here because these web files don't contain any uh, sound roll metadata. That's all set up. And then we'll set up the uh, select areas to search. We've got here. Okay, so now I'm going to expand these tracks by match criteria. And here you can see 
the edit load can form reference tracks and the muteware files that it's found on top of each other. So we'll just delete all of them. And now we'll just expand the second edit load conform reference track. And again, get rid of the conform reference track and the clips that it found. Uh, delete. And now I'll just put that on an output so we can see something. Okay. So here you can see we have now conformed exactly in sync all the channels of the location poly web files to match the camera audio that came from the AEF. And the only data we had to enable us to do that was the slate and take information and the Pro Tools clip, which we were able to manipulate in edit load to generate web file names that allowed Pro Tools to link to the original location webs. So that's all for this demonstration. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the edit load help menu to launch the extensive user guide if you need more information. And if you haven't tried edit load out for yourself, either on Mac OS or Windows, just head to the download page of our website. Once the app is installed, just run it and click try to activate a trial license.